Hi, good morning, good morning. Thank you for keeping us company here at Y254 TV. In case you're just getting to join us, my name is Grace Smangi and this is Y in the Morning hashtag Wednesday. That is WCW and Strength of a Woman where we get to encourage each other as women and get to highlight notable women in the society doing something out here. And of course, this is our first conversation this day, so you've not missed a lot. If you missed the giggles, you're here for the conversation. And we are glad you could join us. Uh, let me just let you know where you could find us on our social media handles. Interact with us across our social media handles at Y254 channel. And in case you're not able to access a live TV, you can be able to access our live streaming at www.kbc.co.ke forward slash Y254. But before I talk a lot, nimesema this year, I am punguzaing my manenos. So before I talk a lot, today it's about young women in the place of leadership with me in studio. I have um, Elsie. <laughs> I have Elsie with me in the studio. She is a young director. Yes, yes, I said a young director. A lady doing quite a number of notable things in the society. But to crown it all, she is a model. So before I get to speak for her a lot, Karibu Sana Elsie. Thank you so much, Grace. We really appreciate your coming. Thank you. So before uh, we get, we delve or we, di we dig deeper into the discussion, please let us know who are you, what do you do, then we can get talking about the conversation today. My pleasure. Um, je m'appelle Elsie Mboy, j'ai 18 ans, uh, je habite Rai et Nairobi. Uh, je parle anglais, swahili et français. In short, I'm saying I'm El Sombre <laughs> Kamau. <laughs> I, <laughs> I almost disappeared. <laughs> oh, let me tell you, I almost disappeared. So I was like, are we in Kenya? Where, where are we going to? <laughs> Don't worry, I got you. But it's a good one. You got me there. You got me there. <laughs> you really got me there. But... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, so what are you saying? Sorry, I, I rudely interrupted you. It's okay. Uh -huh. um, Elsa Mboy Kamau. I'm 18 years old. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a student at Alliance Francais, studying French. I'm also a student at Zetech University, studying international relations. I'm a model, currently having two titles, Miss Kitengela 2022 and 2023, and Miss Tranquility First Runners Up. I'm a director for Natural Talent Modeling Agency. Uh, I'm a makeup artist at Pengs of Nairobi. I'm also an actress at Kickoff, which is also under Reverb Nation. Um, yeah, that's it. Wow. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, huh, what was I doing when I was 18? That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> That I'm actually thinking about. But it was Grace, what are you doing when you were 18? Someone here is a director, she is a model, she holds two titles. Congratulations. Thank Thank you. Let me just <laughs> <laughs> let me just begin by saying congratulations. So before we even get to talking about, let's just start where you, you you've introduced yourself. How do you handle all this? Um it's basically my mom. Let me tell her she when she sees opportunities, she loves to grab them. She, cause actually when she was 18, she didn't do much and she wanted to do much, but you know, African parents back in the days, they didn't allow it. So mm -hmm. she said that her daughter won't, she won't suffer. So like she told me that to become a model, she also, when I finished high school, I finished last year on April. So after high school, I did makeup artistry because you know that long period, uh, my mom told me that you can't stay at home. Why are you staying at home? And there's a lot to grab out there. So I did makeup artistry. Then uh, oh, modeling, I started uh, way back in 2020. Uh, since the Corona period, we were not going to school. So my mom told me you can't stay at home. But then she really hates me staying at home. Like, why are you doing, what are you doing? So um, I started modeling in 2020, but I started competing in 20, last year, 2022. Yeah, so basically on 2020, I, ju I was just training and all, but I didn't go into any pigeons or any competitions. 
yeah now in 2020 now i started using my skills my learning skills and then i started cut working oh wow so you your modeling career was was birthed while you were in high school yeah so how how did it play out when you went back to school um it uh, um when i went back to school i just kept it on hold because i can't focus on two things and act, i was actually in boarding so i could not be able to juggle two things i just wanted to focus on my studies then uh, modeling can just do it afterwards since it's not a temporary thing it's just a permanent thing i am one person who loves and um, am people oriented so i love hearing stories from people and and i I feel like I, I, I want to ask now, this is as a person I'm asking, um, for that big breakthrough to come. Of course, we have all gone through something. We all have a story that pushed us to the limelight, or we have a story that pushed, uh, pushed us to doing notable things in the society. I mean, uh, there's something that fuels your passion. There's something that pushed you to wanting, in as much as your mom has been your support, there's that thing that has pushed you. There's that story, maybe something you've gone through, something you're fighting, uh, you know. Do you have a story you could share with us? Um, just an inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, before I started working, cut working and all, I used to see modeling shows like Gigi Hadid, Bella Hadid, they were just walking out there and you could see their body structure as in their, the way they face people, the way they cut walk and uh, the pictures they used to take as in you know modeling pictures they're just outstanding as in they're just fabulous. So I was wondering why can't I do that since what's not driving me to do that? So I actually never told my mom about it then when she told me to cut work I was just Oh, did you read my mind or something? Because I just want to, um, I really love Gigi Hadid because you see uh, her body structure, it's really good. And then she makes a lot of money through modeling. So what drove me to do modeling, it's just that, yeah. I wanted to be like them. I just say that one day I'll be on hills, one day I'll be on the runway cut walking, and one day I'll be one, like one of them. Oh, wow. Um, how many awards do you have? Um, just two. I've been to two pageants recently and I just took the crown in both of them. The one for Kitingela? Yes. And the other one? Yes, and Miss Tranquility. Mm, sorry? Miss Tranquility. Miss Tranquility. Yes. So do this, do this, um, <laughs> just, just curiously asking, okay. do this, do this uh, awards come with like, um, so the way we see Miss Tourism, Miss Kenya, they come with a budget, they come with something like, um, they come with a budget for the specific um, Miss um, Beauty pageant to do, um, what do you call this? To do a project. Okay. Uh, a project, a CSR for the community. So do the awards you got uh, have something of the sort? Um, maybe I can speak for, um, for Miss Tranquility, I can say that they just give you support. Since when you just want to do a project maybe, um, you make a poster about it and then they just contribute your money and then they support you, especially the organization. The organization is the Wazesha team. They just support you. And for Miss Kitengela, well, we are working with the youth affair for Kitengela to, he told me that he wanted to support me in all my projects, so I'm looking forward to it. Okay. So do you have projects that you'd want to do? Like something, I'm um, um, assuming that you have something that fuels your passion. We've seen um, different pageants or other beauty pageants doing different things. Uh, there was one who was very famous, I can't remember her name, I don't want to miss quote. There's one who was very famous for tourism and uh, she was very famous for planting trees and, you know, ensuring a greener Kenya. And then there's another one who was very passionate about um, yeah, women giving sanitary towels. So do you have a project that is very dear to your heart that you'd want to say as you grow in your career in um, modeling and beauty pageantry that you'd want to follow a certain, um, what do you call it, a certain, a certain project that you'd want to do for the society? Um, I've done two projects. Mm -hmm. That's 
one for pad drive where we gave out pads especially here in the streets of Koinange Street along also Jivanji since a lot of women are out there and they don't have any money to buy their own pads or something. Um, then we planted trees especially in Kitengela using this title Miss Kitengela and we were with the aspiring MCA Mr. Alex Inket where he organized that tree planting and also we went there and planted um, various trees and also we are working out on some various projects, upcoming projects like we want to, especially we want to plant more trees since especially our world today it's so messed up especially with the sun and the rains are not coming and uh, we also want to um, carry out street feeding so, um, yeah. So how do you intend to do the street feeding? Like, uh, where specifically? Um, we want to go, like, in town. Like, you see, when you're working in town, then some very street children just come to you, like, and say, dear 10 bob, and say, dear 20 bob. Why, ju why not just give them food? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But not, as, not only in town, but in various places, like um, Kibera, Madare, such places where people are starving and they don't have food. So um, I assume that by the time you're thinking about doing the um, street feeding, you have a team you're working with? Yes. So you have a team? Yes. How um, this team comprises of? Um, it's, it's the Nature Talent Modeling Agency, mm -hmm. which comprises of various models, uh, and also the producer, the manager, uh, the manager, she's a very famous model. She is Miss Africa, Africa Unite, where they are competing in Botswana this year. Yeah, you see, she has very various connections and very models who are out there who want to help us. So our team, it's really big. Yeah, I can say it's big. Mm -hmm. So you uh, make sense. You are part of a larger, of a larger group. Yes. So how are you about to? identify um, the genuine needy cases and people who are imposters because you know they we, people are out here they are they have good hearts they want to help but then you encounter a group of you know how are you how are you able to ensure that the help you give goes to the really most needy people and not just people who are imposters mm. First of all, you know, when you look at somebody, you can see that they're really needy, as in, they're also their body structure, as in some people are really skinny. You see that this one is not pretending. This one is not just an imposter, but he really needs help. He just needs food. And you see, like, maybe in children home, like, you see, those are not imposters. Those are really children who need food. And um, you see, like, in town, some people are just con men. They just want money. And... Um, I'm not so sure about that, but uh, my instincts will just tell me this person just needs food. Because you see, by looking at that person, you just know that, yeah, he really needs support. Okay. Um, hmm. I feel like uh, we should probably, because now today we are talking about women and, you know, we are, we are not limited to, um, the conversation is not limited to one side. Okay. I, I'd want to ask, um, how far have you gone with your makeup uh, classes? Uh, for my makeup classes, um, I studied at Linton's Beauty College. It's located in Westlands. They offer a three-month course, especially when you want to do a certificate level. So I've just done certificate. So yeah. you, you're done with it? Yes. So I'm I done assume with it. you know um, what do you call this? Um, trying to get the, the right wording for it. You know skincare routine? Yeah, I do. Uh, I, I'd want to ask you. <laughs> okay. No, that question has crossed my mind because I was like, today we are talking about women and there are women out here who have had really problem, like personally I've been a victim of that until recently where I had a problem with skincare routine. Do you mind taking us through probably skincare routine? There's maybe someone who's wondering what do I do to my face? What products do I use? We don't have to probably talk about the product, but we could talk about, uh, you could help us um, or talk to us about um, basic skincare routine. Um, what I can ask women is that to use Ghana because you see like Aziad let me just use an example like Aziad Aziad has skin was so 
um, it was filled with pimples and you see after using Ganya her skin, her skin is so smooth and you just wonder what but the magic is Ganya so like um, Ganya has various products as in the exfoliating the sunscreen uh, the scrubber the face mask and all and you see like when you follow that procedure I guess it's good for you okay um, hmm. I want to, to come to the level of someone who can't afford products, okay. but they want to do something at home, like something that they can't afford to buy. A um, homemade? Yes. Okay. Routines, just things that people can do around the house, you know, like how do you um, wash in your face? What do you do like in terms of, I want you to, 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 I want us to come to the level of someone who's, who's there and they're like, I can't buy these products, but I need to use the locally available things around me. Okay, um, uh, what I can advise them is that to use like natural things like aloe vera. Aloe vera when you apply it on your face. Yes, I know aloe vera cannot be found, but it's cheaper, especially when you buy it. And it's really good in your skin because it brightens your skin. And also I rubbing your face with ice, it's really good since it... Mm, it needed kuziba pause, um, and also turmeric and plus maybe avocado. I usually use personally. I use homemade products like avocado, turmeric, coconut oil in applying in my face, and it really works out good. Especially coconut oil when you use it as your day-to-day -day oil routine in your face, face oil. Uh, it really it makes your skin glow, as in it glows. Then for the pimples, um, when you get back at home, maybe you should wash your face and with soap. Because you see, Adiko useme ati usayako haina uchafu. Yes, it does. Because umeenda po nje, umepigwa na juu, umepigwa na vumbi, and uh, your face is so oily, as in inashikana, alafu unalala. So it's, your uchafu in a clock pozako, then it leads to pimples. Then maybe applying sunscreen when you go out there because nobody likes sunburns <laughs> nobody likes sunburns <laughs> then uh, uh, washing your pillowcase it's really healthy as in washing after one week because your pillowcase is going to uchafu maybe in your leg is going to uchafu alafu nono unalalapo then sasa usia kondo yu inashikana nayo as in this ki the face it's really sensitive my victim <laughs> <laughs> i'm a victim <laughs> yeah is where I think before before I started, um, I think before I started actually taking the wash your pillowcase, um, mm. maybe seriously. Uh. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you the point where I started washing, like taking seriously washing my face. Then I realized that my face, this side, mm. it has turned, like turned. I had very like very profound. Um, outbreaks. And mm. I was wondering, what's what's happening to my face? <laughs> Why do I have outbreaks? So I started reading, and I was like, oh wow, probably me mim to change pillowcases after like two, two three weeks. And then in Melala, I don't I don't funga my hair because I'm those ones. If I'm Mr. Joshua, I <laughs> Why am I wearing stockings and bonnets <laughs> for for why <laughs> for who for, for where? But yeah. I, I, I really I really get it. I think the other area where I lack before we talk about something else um, is drinking water. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's a challenge because actually yeah. me, I usually encourage myself that I need to, the doctors advise that you drink like eight glasses per day. But unona struggles are going to kill time as in kunya glasses mbili then kimbia as in consistency are going to I always expect that the magic to ukunyo to ikai to kumuili as in. So that's the one challenge that I have. Yeah, I try a lot drinking water, but as a kuenda cho. That is not actually my problem. My problem is me feel what I don't have to and then if, even if I try to. Put things. I've tried decorating what I have tried putting things in it. <laughs> Cucumbers, lemons, <laughs> carrots. <laughs> Please. <laughs> um, what? What? Um, have you worked with any brands so far? For the modeling agency. Mm -hmm. um, maybe Other than just the modeling agencies, have you worked with any brand? No, not yet. 
but it's something that you'd want to yeah give a try especially um seeing my face on one of the billboards as in advertising maybe something ah, it's my dream <laughs> <laughs> okay, um why french though why are you studying French? I actually wanted to ask you that when, when you actually spoke in French and then I got confused. <laughs> <laughs> so why French though? Uh, I studied French because my course really needs um, a foreign language and also for the international relations it deals globally and not just not inside just the country so I need to learn like one foreign language and also I'm thinking of studying French uh, I mean Spanish. I really get the language so so fun how do you how do you think or how do you see yourself marrying um what you are studying right now plus what you are doing have you pursued uh, sorry if i missed that but let me just re ask it again have you pursued fashion as as a, as a class as a course like you go to school study for f uh, for modeling and stuff um no I just do modeling as a fun activity. Uh, but you got accepted into agencies. Will do you, will you want to venture into a school to study it as a profession? Um, yeah, taking it seriously. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, I don't mind at all. Um, yeah, I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you feel or how do you think you're going to marry international relations or why do you see these two meeting, when you when you imagine you as a person you've done international relations, and you're also a model, probably to same a two peer of course by experience, you know. Mm -hmm. So how do you see yourself marrying these two? I feel they like they're they're, <laughs> they're in two different worlds. So yeah. I'm just imagining how do you see yourself marrying them together? Um, for international relations, uh, you can be a diplomat, and if you. For a diplomat, you need to be outstanding since your own country is sending you to various other countries to represent them. So like um, fashion, you can do fashion as in about the wearing because you can't go like always in the VV into other countries. So like um, the clothes that you're wearing, it really speaks a lot about people, especially the representation towards people. Uh, for a diplomat, they usually wear like maybe suits, um, yeah, maybe official clothes. But you know, you see, there are type of various official clothes that they don't look good, as in, but kunezenye is inaka poor. So like in my fashion, I can really apply that, especially in my wearing. Um, as we approach towards the close of this conversation, there's, 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 uh, there's this um, conversation that has been making rounds across social media, Twitter and, and the like. And there's this, there's this concern or rather outcry, if I had called, for lack of a better word, let me just call it outcry, of, of young people being included in the, in the leadership positions. What's your take on that? Being a young leader, being a young leader, it's really motivating because you can really grasp a lot. You can really uh, manage various things. Uh, for example, like me, I'm being a director at the age of 18. That's so really outstanding, especially for me, especially for my age. I even I can't imagine that I'm a director at 18. Mm, for the youth, um, yeah, it's really nice being a leader at this time because you, like maybe let's say we are just practicing and you see when we are being leaders right now in the future we can be like really amazing leaders out there so since we are used to these things at a tender age and you see like maybe when we are maybe 30 years old um, we can't find it difficult being a leader or maybe appointed uh, a leader of many people you can really mm -hmm. manage it What are your aspirations as a model? Where do you see yourself five years from now in the future? Five years in the future as a model. Mm -hmm. Like what are your aspirations as a model, as a person? Being a high fashion model, especially in developing countries. Like, you see like those models that walk really confidently, um, showcasing their designers 
the designer's clothes like yeah i would like one day to be there like maybe in five years time anything else you want to tell us about yourself about just basically um what i can say about myself is that i'm happy for where i am right now i'm happy for i'm really glad for what i'm doing right now and I really like to tell people that when you get a chance, just grasp it all. Because you see, yes, some chances may be not be the best thing for you. But you see, when you just grab chances, 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 one day you'll make it. And that chance, maybe that one chance, um, it can really lead you to something greater. And uh, it can really change your life. So like, don't just sit there at home just do something extraordinary like you see like same if come as yard as said she just but i love as sorry to say so <laughs> uh she used her talent in which led her no na kasai anapewa kazi na youth affairs zinia she used her talent very well and you see where she's leading up to uh-huh the yeah, last question last last one okay <laughs> So um your last question. Tell us your social media handles and give a shout out to anyone you'd want to give a shout out to. Use that camera. Um on Instagram you can find me at lcwkamau and also on t- TikTok you can find me at e.l.s underscore ie and um, I really thank my mom for the first year they can meet. Thank you mom, I love you and also for my friends, I love you so much for the support you've given me and uh, yeah. thank you Y254 for hosting me, it's, it has been really great, I loved it. Oh, cool. <laughs> that we had before the show began and here we are <laughs> it's been a good one thank you thank you for making time for coming for the notable work you're doing and we hope that it, as time progresses even as you get to get more experience more people supporting what you're doing you'd really spearhead a, a great cause in the society so we wish you all the best. Thank you, Grace. You're welcome anytime. That was it from this fast conversation on strength of a woman. We were talking to Elsie Kamau, who is a young director at 18. Woo, what are you doing at 18, Mimi? <laughs> At but yeah, this is quite notable. She, she, Elsa is a young director at 18 and we've had a comprehensive discussion on the role of women in leadership plus the role of young people and a little bit about everything you've had. That is all we had for you from Strength of a Woman but do not touch that dial. Val is coming back with WCW.